Hey guys, this is Kevin Kim with Precision Powerlifting Systems. I'm going to do a quick, I actually want to do this for um, my group that's training just because our circumstances are different not being in a regular gym. Um, but I figured I would put it out there for everybody. So I know with all the gyms closed, people are being thrown into their basements, garages, whatever, and they have very limited equipment of stuff. And I kind of want to go over how to put training together in a in a good thinking way and how to adjust and stuff as, as we go about. Um, so one thing, like we've always used a ton of variation in our training and we've always had access to gyms that allow us to use a lot of good variation. Um, you know, they've always been well equipped. They've always had specialty bars, uh, band pegs, safeties, good solid racks. You know, I said the bars boxes, pins, we, we've had all of those things. So now in the garage, I think like basic equipment everybody needs. One, we need a rack with safety pins, um, a barbell, enough plates that can challenge your training a little bit. A, a box would help and bands and chains and stuff you can add later on. I'm actually gonna try to put the bands underneath uh, the rack where I, where I train currently and we'll see, we'll see how that works and maybe we can add that into here. So if we just do this alone, Right, so if we take a squat, we have a high bar position, a low bar position, a front squat. We then can change stance width. So we can do a close stance, medium stance, wide stance squat. Um, we can use boxes and pins. We can combine all of these things as well too. So we could do a high bar, close stance, pin squat if we wanted to, or a high bar, wide stance, box squat. We can do front squats to a box. We can. I'm not a huge fan of altering tempos and pauses to do more max effort work just because people tend to shortchange the um, the pauses and the tempos just to lift more weight so it kind of defeats the purpose. So I think pauses and tempos are important, but I think they have more of a technique carryover than they do with max effort stuff. Um, and I actually, so we had less weights to use in the beginning and a lot of my lifters had less weights to use in the beginning as well. And one of the issues we were running into is everybody started to have these little nagging things. And like these nagging things weren't necessarily negatively affecting training just because the weights were so light, you could still lift it anyways. Uh, but I was driving on Saturday to pick up my daughter and literally my elbow was screaming at me holding onto the steering wheel. I think part of it is I'm gripping squats and I'm gripping bench. Then I come in the next day, I'm gripping bench, I'm gripping deadlifts. Then I come in the ne next day, I'm gripping squats, I'm gripping bench. So. The higher frequency stuff just seems to have a lot more little nagging things that have been um, popping up. Plus, it's just, it's boring. It's not the same. It's not as fun. Um, so I'm getting all these like little issues popping up and my training quality is down. Like the sport is lifting heavy. So if you're not in that 95 to 100% range or somewhere in that ballpark, you're really not training the sport. You're kind of bodybuilding or doing like general fitness type stuff. Don't get me wrong. Higher rep lower intensity training has its place and it has its place within the programs that we have, but I just don't see it as having as much efficacy towards improving one RM as doing more heavy stuff. Um, the thing is with the heavier stuff, the more options we have, I, I do think the better it just, it gives you, it just gives you a lot more options. I mean, it gives you, you know, things to work on things you can, you can fix things that can challenge you in different ways, keeps training exciting. Um, but what I had just listed right there could be almost an entire year of max effort squat work. And then when we get to the bench, we can change grips so we can do really close grips. So thumbs together, grab the bar, close grip. We do index finger where knurling meets the smooth medium grip pinkies on the rings, wide grip index fingers on the rings. Ultra wide is an illegal grip about an inch outside, outside of the rings. Uh, it's company bench blocks. You can get a block that's anywhere from, you know, that how you put it on the bar is one to five, uh, boards. So you have a one board, a two board, a three board, a four board, a five board. If your rack has safety pins, you can now do bench press on pins. You can take it out of the hooks, bring it down to the pins, or you can just do a concentric only where it just starts right on the pins. Um, you can do tempos and pauses here too, but just like with the, um, with the squat, I'm not a huge fan of doing that for max effort work, but for some other things. You can get a slingshot, it's pretty cheap. Um, 
allows you to overload the bench in a little bit different of a way. It saves your pecs a little bit if you're a little dinged up. Um, then for deadlifts, if you can get, like most gyms have two inch mats. If you were able to borrow some from your gym or you, you figure something out, right? You could stand on a piece of wood that's that big. Like figuring out a deficit and to make blocks is pretty easy to do. So if you can have a two and a four inch deficit and two and four inch blocks, that's a great start. Having a six inch for each one would be great as well. Um, we can change stances. So we have heels together, we have conventional, we have close stance sumo, medium stance sumo, wide stance sumo. We can do all of those off of deficits. We can do all of those off of blocks. Snatch grip deadlifts, straight knee deadlifts. Like we have all these different variations that we can do with just a barbell and plates and very limited equipment. So you can still run a conjugate program in these scenarios in your garage with limited space and limited equipment. Um, especially if you're doing it like typical West Side style where you're rotating only one lower body max effort lift per week. You can just rotate between the squat and the deadlift each week and you have more than a year worth of training right there. Uh, the other exercises that we add in, because obviously like I think what people forget about is like most gyms have other equipment to do accessory work. So <coughs> one of the um, things that I've done is we have these like core exercises that we do outside of our main lifts. And these are the ones that I think actually have good carryover into our, um, into our main lifts. So good mornings. And we can do these concentric only off pins. We can, if you have a safety squat bar or something, you can use that. Uh, you can change bar placement on the good mornings, but you can change stance width, reps, load, all of those things with the good mornings. We, we keep those in all the time. And then we have overhead press and floor press. So overhead press, we can do standing or we can do seated. There's some pause variations I've used with overhead press that it changes it up a bit. Um, I'm not sure how much like efficacy there is in terms of a paused overhead press going into the bench press, but I think if it makes your overhead press go up, your pressing strength is going to go up. There's probably some carryover. And floor pressing, you use accommodating resistance and just continually change grips. We never do floor press with the, our, any part of our hands outside of the rings. So any grip inside of the rings is something that we'll use. And we can pause the upper arm lower on the, I mean longer on the floor for those. We can load it differently. You can do high rep stuff, low rep stuff. Um, since I can only train three days, and the days that I'm training are Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So they're kind of, it's three training days within four and then I have big breaks. So on Tuesday, I'm gonna do a max effort squat to start. Now the thing is, is if we're training less, you do want the stimulus to be great enough that it requires enough recovery so that you're not training for a day and then you have four days off. So there's always just this, you're not making any progress because you're always just kind of recovering back to that original baseline and you're not really stressing that baseline to get bigger. Um, so I'm going to do some high rep squat stuff. So I very, very rarely have ever programmed reps over five um, for any of the for any of the lifts. So what I'm going to start doing is use lighter weights and even do maybe sets of eight to ten. I think in my first wave, I'm going to wave it at maybe like 50% for eight, 55% for six, 60% for four for a few sets or something. And, and I'll adjust based off of the... Uh, the intensity of the lift coming off that max effort because um, I do think doing like higher rep work like that might it might be tough after a good max effort. Um, I also might have this like little sliding scale so depending on how that max effort went for the day if it was really hard I might have this little like five to ten percent change just to adjust the intensity so basically the rep work afterwards we'll get some technique stuff out of it maybe I add in some pauses or do something like that to kind of work on the technique. Um, but it's basically our accessory work. And just coming from a Shaco background, I'm, a, I'm more of a fan of doing something that I know is going to carry over. So I do believe that our squat will make our squat better. Um, as long as we get the right variations, we hit the right angles and we target the right weaknesses. And then after I do the squat rep work, I'm gonna do some good morning. So let's say my max effort work, or maybe I don't even do max effort work because I'm feeling banged up and I just do rep work. Um, in the case of that, I'll probably use somewhere between that like 75 to 85% range. So I'll make it a little bit heavier. If I do max effort work and it's a good max effort day, I'll use something probably between 55 and 70%, um, somewhere in there. And then the good morning will just be kind of dictated by how the rest of training went. 
So if I'm just doing rep work, I'll probably get the intensity through the good mornings and I'll, I'll push that RP a little bit, but otherwise I might just get some more reps in, in those positions. Um, day two when I come in, so the following day, I'll do my bench max effort stuff. Same thing, bench rep work afterwards, probably a little higher volume just because I can recover better from the bench. Um, either more sets, more reps, something like that. Um, and then after that, there'll be either an overhead press variation or a floor press var variation. Those will just rotate through. And I'll probably keep those heavier to start with. So like threes to fives, um, it's kind of what I have in my head because I'm not too sure I've ever gotten anything at a high rep overhead press or high rep floor press just because the weights end up being so light. Um, but it probably has its place and there's probably situations where I will do something like that. And then on my day three, I plan to do some bench work. Just, uh, I'm a big fan of not coming in and just deadlifting. Um, this has been just like drilled into me when I worked with Shaco, when I worked with Hartman. Hartman had said that, you know, Vincentello had always said to do something before a deadlift. So it just seems like it's good advice from people who've been doing it for a long time. And also, you know, Hartman and Anello had big pulls. So I'll, I'll start with some like bench rep work. Not too sure what that will entail, whether it'll be like straight up dynamic effort work. It'll probably go, you know, I'm gonna steal this from Mike Gallant, who was on my podcast. Um, it'll probably be just a sliding scale based off of the max effort work from that day two. So if I had a really hard training day and I'm pretty banged up, I'll probably stick to the very lighter loads, the real lighter loads. And if I don't, maybe I'll push somewhere in the threes to fives or something like that. Or, you know, I'll keep the load low, but have a long pause on the chest and get the intensity that way. Um, after that, I plan on pulling a max effort deadlift, but I plan on doing this every other week. Um, I never really fared too well from pulling heavy singles on the deadlift every week in conjunction with the squats. Um, and there may come a time and place where I rotate the deadlifts into that day one and just do, so I'll do my max effort deadlifts day one, maybe some back off rep work for the deadlifts on after that max effort work, just something like really light moving around and then the good mornings and stuff. And then maybe just lighter squat stuff on my day three after ben uh, before bench. Um, so that's always an option if I feel like pulling heavy. Um, I'll probably do some back off deadlift work. So I might do something straight knee, just really hit the hamstrings and glutes after a max effort. So maybe some straight knee sumo deadlifts, um, conventional, like just changing my stance, maybe throw a snatch grip in there occasionally. Um, but I think that'll be my third exercise on that day. Now, if I don't rotate the deadlift up into my day one max effort lift, what I'll do is every other week, I'll just make it with light squats and uh, bench on that day. So basically like straight up dynamic effort, except for both upper and lower. Um, I think that'll be good for recovery. So after Friday, I have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then I lift again on Tuesday. So it's like four days. So I should be pretty recovered to come back in and hit another big squat. Um, you know, we'll see. Maybe I, you know, I'm going to try to keep the exercises in for the three weeks and I might just rotate them around. So let's say on day one, I come in like today, I think I'm going to do a close stance squat. And let's say I hit something that's like a true 10 and there's just really nowhere to go. So I always tell everybody five to 10 pounds, leave it on the bar so you can get it next week. So if I hit a true 10, what I'll probably do the following week is I'll just pick a different deadlift variation and I'll pull heavy and I'll take the rep work that I would have done on day one and I'll move it to my day three. That'll just allow me to kind of continue to get lower body intensity, like those heavy singles in every single week. Um, if I pull like a 10 for a deadlift also, I'll, I'll figure something out. But I think what I'll do is, you know, there's just a lot of variations for the deadlift that I don't think beat me up quite as much as the squat does. Um, but if I do get into those variations of the deadlift that I can throw some greater absolute loads onto, it does bang me up pretty good. So I'll have to pay attention to that and manipulate those days how I see fit. Typically I can bench heavy almost every single week, you know, with the occasional week that I might have to tailor it down a little bit, but with the two days, I've never run into too many problems benching. Um, so that's kind of the plan that I'm starting with now and just being more flexible and adaptable just as, as things come up and, and being not, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to keep that same structure where, you know, squat and deadlift are kind of those lower body movements. The bench is the upper body. And it's like, hey, we got to get a certain amount of intensity. We got to get a certain amount of volume and we got to get a certain amount of technique work in each week in a limited time with limited space, limited equipment. How can we do this best? Um, oh, one other exercise that I forgot that I'm going to add in and I'll probably do this. I'll kind of just throw it in where I see fit, but barbell rows are another one that we're going to do um, frequently. I think it's good to build the, you know, the whole back, the lower back holds it in place, all, all that stuff. I think there's a lot of good to it. Um, and just getting us out of so much pressing and doing some, some upper body pulling like that, I think probably has some benefits. So that'll be another one that we throw in there. Um, and maybe I do that on the deadlift day. Uh, maybe I do it every other week. So if I'm doing, um, light squats, light bench on that day three, maybe I throw in a, a heavy barbell row and just get intensity that way. It's not going to bang me up the same way that a deadlift or a squat would. Um, but it's going to be one of those things that I'm going to, you know, adjust day to day, week to week as I see fit with it. And that's only three days. I still have some lifters going four days. Um, you just got to kind of figure out, I think one thing that people are running into is they're bored, so they want to train more, but you got to remember that outside stress is much higher. So recovery is going to be a little bit more difficult during these times. And this all depends on your situation um, going on, like with the stay at home orders and everything else. Like I have a few lifters who are doing extremely well right now with their training just because they have less going on. So they're able to recover more um, and they're just in, you know, semi better situations than some others. Um, so you do have to keep that stuff in mind. I still think that if the mo the more singles that we can do, the more quality singles, like being 85% or, or better, um, like recovery wise to come in and hit a single, I think the better off your training is going to be in the longer term anyways. Um, the one thing you do have to keep in mind though, if we are using less days per week to train, so I have some people training two days per week. So if they have four or five days in between a training session, sometimes it's like you create this stimulus and then everything just slides all the way backwards. And then you create that same stimulus slides backwards. You're just going to end up getting stuck. So you have to create a strong enough stimulus that forces the body to adapt. And you have to kind of keep applying a stimulus. So you want them to not be fully recovered every single time that they go into train. Um, so you got to manipulate the schedule the best you can and have enough volume in there that makes it a little bit more difficult to actually recover from. So for us doing higher rep sets like that, especially if we're really going quick, that's a real novel stimulus for us. Um, we very, very, very rarely have ever done more than five reps. So if we're doing sets of, you know, six to 10, it, it's an entire, that stuff that like for accessories, that's usually what we did for reps. You know, if we're doing chest flies or something like that, we would do sets of six to 10, but now if we're gonna do it for the actual lifts, it's gonna change things up a little bit. Um, but this is just like a brief introductory video on kind of how I'm putting together training, um, how we're still lifting heavy, how we're still applying the same principles that we would apply when we have more access. Um, and I'll kind of keep going through and updating this and, uh, because I do want to share it with the group. Um, but I also, you know, think it's important for other people to, to hear it too. And they might have some ideas, questions, um, criticisms of it, and I welcome it all. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram as KWCAN, our team, Precision Power Lifting Systems.